Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 533 Tuesdays. We've been doing this. The Mayhem Nation is on fire over at the Facebook group. I'm at Sorgatron here in Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, with a wonderful Mayhem Nation representation from all across the country. First of all, first of all here locally, sharing the the Western PA space is the Riz at the E Riz on the Twitter. What? Very comfortable here, Sorg. Hey, you're also your video just went out, so I don't know what's up with that. You got a little too comfortable, maybe. But also with us from Poughkeepsie, New York, and fresh off of attending Takeover Brooklyn, he is Mad Mike. Sorg, I cried. I cried at Takeover Brooklyn. It's very dusty in in the rafters of the Barclay Center, and also feels. Also feels. Did you hug the stranger next to you when she won? Um. Well, well, no, no. Sorg Bailey did not win. Oh wait, I'm I'm com- is, I'm, I'm confusing. Sorg is Sorg drunk. Is drunk. Sorg I'm confusing takeover with last Raw. Year, yeah, he thinks I'm Alex Cars. He thinks a lot of things are. No, well then I'm sure by process of illumination that this is Alex Cars in California, California, joining us this week of Chikara in fifteen dot com. Hi friends, uh, I just wanted to I just wanted to say that I watched two and a half hours of some of the best wrestling ever this weekend. I also saw about half of Takeover and two matches from SummerSlam. I see what you did there. That was oh, a swerve. Oh, there yeah. you go. There you go. Uh, of course, this is your Wrestling Mayhem show. You can check out everything hey, over at. I'm here too. What? No, no, you're not. You're not here yet. I'm here too. No, you're not. You're not here yet. I'm, wait, it's the ghost wait, in the machine. Wait. It's hey. the ghost in the machine. Eamon's oh, here. Away, apparently. I'm sorry. Eamon is here. I'll take away, sorry. Eamon's here, but I don't have him on video. So he's here in spirit. That's okay. Eamon, you get That's in the corner. Awesome. The floating voice Where? of Eamon is Where with is us. that voice coming from, Sword. Eamon Payton is coming to it's us coming from, from an undisclosed location in Dallas, Texas. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. And you yeah. can listen to more of his voice That's on Smart Mark works. Video. Smart Mark. Smart Mark hey video. Sorg, I'm convinced the voices that leaked out of Randy Orton's head have grown into my own. Hmm. Why do the voices I'm, sound like... That's weird. Why do they sound like Eamon? I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe they're sorry. Hmm. They're, they're counseling me. They understand. Indeed. Indeed. They're Anyways. All, they're also bleeding for some reason. You can share your voices with us. You can subscribe at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can drop out your voices to our uh, uh, hotline over at 412-206-WMS0 or that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to us, please, on the iTunes Stitcher Speaker, iHeartRadio, uh, Google Music. Google Play Music Podcast, <laughs> however you, you find that in there, as That's well right. as uh, the Facebook and the YouTube video formats. A lot of you, probably a lot of new people, check this out on the Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook last week, a surprising number, uh, and we really <laughs> do appreciate that. If you're new, welcome. I hope you like it. Um, and also uh, to everybody, and please share, and please share with your friends. Please like things, and uh, and, and thank you so much for uh, taking part in our mayhem universe. Uh, you can also, uh, we have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show where you two can become our boss. We recorded a lot of chicanery here, uh, before the show that will be going to our Patreon supporters. They are our bosses. They are how we uh, attempt to uh, support the show. And if you want to do a little bit more, if you actually want like us to talk about your thing, there are advertising, technically advertising opportunities through that at some of the higher levels, and we'll work with you. If somebody wants to do an ad, like if somebody wants us to do a commercial, like, hey, um, we do video production over here as well, um, and really weird, a bug just landed on my forehead on the monitor, and that's really, really odd over there. 
It's, it looks like he's going to crawl up my nose. It's weird. Uh, but anyways, distracted. Hi. Uh, Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Also, big thanks to our Patreons. Currently, uh, our longest, longest running one, uh, Mr. Antonio Garza of the WrestlingRevolution.com. The diggity. Woo! Alex Cars. Who's here? Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. <laughs> Ed Burke at Ed Burke uh, 37 on the Twitter. Bobby F. J. Town and the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation per Podcast Betterment. You know how I could never find them before? I realized that we put them at the bottom of every post of, of the podcast. Uh, so we're just reading that now. <laughs> so- <laughs> I I hacked the system. Uh, but anyways, uh, well, thank you to people who do support us. If you find value from the show, want to support it that way. But but uh, you don't have to. Uh, please share the show. Rate it wherever you find it. Like it. Whatever the case may be. And uh, help the Mayhem Nation grow. Or join us over the Wrestling Mayhem Show group on Facebook where, holy crap, you guys have something to say. Wow. It's been mm-hmm. incredible this weekend since, since since TakeOver and SummerSlam. You guys have been going nuts on there. Um, and we're hoping to bring some of that fire here to the show. Um, there's one more thing. Oh, live Tuesdays, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com, about 10 p.m. Eastern time. We start it uh, shortly after SmackDown goes off the air. Thank you, WWE. Uh, so let's get into our first topic. Of course, we had TakeOver and SummerSlam. I don't want to do so much of a breakdown of the two events. Uh, I obviously, I do want to hear a little bit about Mike's experience. Um, so so I, I don't know if his, his, his verses on this is going to really hold up, uh, g- given how he viewed the show. But uh, uh, NXT TakeOver versus SummerSlam. We broke down the cards of what it looked like last year and, and looked at the card leading into it last, last uh, uh, episode. Um, how did they fare? How did NXT TakeOver fare against SummerSlam? Well, TakeOver had the better audience. Okay. Okay. Ah, I, I, I was there. <laughs> no, um, I, actually, I thought they were pretty comparable this year. Um, I, I, I know a lot of people who didn't like SummerSlam. I rather enjoyed it. Uh, the end got a little wonky. With the uh, Roman and Reigns match, uh, with the Roman and Rusev match, but I I like the Orton Brock stuff. I thought that was really interesting. I don't think it should have closed the show necessarily. Mm-hmm. I thought the I thought the order was a little out of whack at SummerSlam. But I thought um, overall Takeover was probably the better show, but SummerSlam had the best match. Cena and AJ. Wow. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's cool. And, and it really did. Um, hold up with the crowd getting into it as it did. Hell, even tonight on SmackDown, I think we got a little bit of that too. Like the crowd has been into a lot of this stuff, you know. Um, um, that's what that's what happens when you push someone whose name isn't John Cena. Well, and, and and they put a huge and they put a, a a great match together that got everybody you know into it. Right? Um, mm-hmm. I think that's fantastic. And and versus you know um, no, I, th- I think that's that's awesome. Uh, so what, what do you, what do the rest of you guys think? Um, um, Riz, what do you, what do you think of, of the, between the two shows? Uh, honestly, Mike hit it on the head. I, I, uh, I agree with him that AJ and, and Cena was the better match of the weekend, best match of the weekend. Uh, but, uh, and, but I had a problem with the summer Sam crowd. Like nothing good came out of that crowd. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Until Raw, oh. but no, no. The, like, you're the, you're and you're referring to the belt issue uh, where yeah. they were chanting stuff and about yeah, how the belt yeah, looked. The, the belt looks. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I, the belt looks, looks fine. Sorry, What's that, Eamon? What's that? I, I don't mean it. Sorry, I, I don't mean to contribute. I Eamon can't um, stay quiet. Uh, He's not where, even where booked for this half of the show. <laughs> Just I, a, I, they don't need to see me. Whatever. Disembodied um, voice of Eamon. Uh, I thought that. I thought in one match they were. Yeah, they were kind of annoying. I didn't think all over the whole show they were. You're, you're saying yeah. that, the, that you're saying the crowd didn't ruin SummerSlam for you. No, I mean they were kind of crappy in the beginning of that match, but whatever. Like, like I, I now. I I'm getting to the argument. I think they sat through a lot. 
Yeah. And the, yeah, and the was, good thing, I'm not saying they sat through a lot. I'm not saying they sat through a lot of bad when I say that. They just sat through a lot. Yeah. Like yeah, it was six hours. Yeah. Six hour plus, show. Plus imagine plus imagine how many people uh, went to take over the night before. Um, how many people went to probably went to a ball that was in the same city the, the right before the show. And how many people like, were actually like traveling and had to get the hell out of there the next right, day right. early in the morning. Or or stay that for raw. Yeah. Well, also, just imagine sitting there for five hours, and then you get the last two matches are a non-match and a TKO. Like, I, I can yeah. see where people are, were upset about that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know why they didn't just close the show with Finn winning. That's they didn't like the belt. The blood. The blood is one reason, uh, I think. <laughs> honestly, yeah. 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 Like, that, 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 that honestly is an issue. The fact that you can't... Ev- Oh, I'm sorry, Riz. Go ahead. They hooked him in with the fact that Brock Lesnar is in this ring and somebody is going to bleed profusely. And it's weird because it was Randy Orton and it was it happened so quick. Right. Like, it was just like, I'm just going to take you down and beat you up now. And that was it. Maybe a few, you know, F5s and suplexes and RKO's. But that the match was probably was, was very short in comparison to some other matches over there. True, but and, 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 and as I was saying, like you can't you can't have somebody bleed halfway through the show, right? No, you really can't. Uh, I mean, not on purpose. Like this most likely was right. Um, there's somebody made a comment to me at an indie show, like, well, "Hey, I can't bleed the second match of the cage show," right? Um, yeah, that you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean that, that like as a legitimate like thing, you know, that they were, you know, like didn't want to accidentally bleed or anything like that. Um, so, you know, I mean that's that's part of the philosophy there. So that that's why. I mean, you may not like the ending or what it did or or, or whatever the case may be, but there's a reason why. That is the go home thing with the the you know the top star on the show. Um, and, and I know we get mad about like the you know Rock Lesnar being the guy on top. At a, at a SummerSlam, but he is the cross uh, cross media uh, 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 face. You know what I mean? I'm saying that yeah, wrong. That's not I the lie. word I know, but he's also I, the guy I, who just got popped for steroids from the UFC. Well, you know, like, we're just ignoring that, and I, we're still making money off of him, and that's what's important here. I, I I have no problem with Brock being on top of the card. My issue is with I don't think I don't see the point of Brock winning. No. Sorry. No. So you'd have Randy, Randy Orton Randy win Randy. over Brock Lesnar. Yeah, I, I would have sold like he gets beat the shit out of like they had and bleeding all over the place, but the match continues and Randy fights back. I thought that, I think that would be really cool. And because right now it doesn't help Randy at all. He's just feuding with Bray Wyatt now, and Brock's going to be gone. And I don't know. I'm just kind of over Lesnar. Right. I'm over the fact that they're using. I'm over the use of Lesnar. The, the thing like, is, uh, sorry, Eamon, What? When they bring in Lesnar, there's no way to get your heat back from Lesnar. Right, right. There's no way to get it back. Because we forget like, about it six months later when he comes yeah, back. Yeah, like Randy Orton should be furious. Right. That Brock basically eviscerated him with elbows. Right. And there's nothing he can do about it. Um, I, I don't think we, we have uh, reached over this way, but Alex, what did you think of, of uh, NXT versus uh, SummerSlam as far as what they delivered on? Um, well, like I said, I, I watched about half of TakeOver, but the half that I saw was amazing. Uh, I caught the tag title match between Revival, uh, Journey Gogano, and Tommaso Ciampa. That was awesome match. <laughs> um, really enjoyed that. Also, the NXT Women's title match was great, and the NXT title match. Like, all, all that, that whole half that I saw was really fun top to bottom. Uh, Honestly, I especially like the Shinsuke's entrance for that match. <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was such a fun entrance. You know how hey, you know how over a superstar is when you can have a violinist out on the stage and the crowd is just completely into it. Like that whole thing was like that whole entrance plus the match itself, just a lot of fun. Um, SummerSlam, I can't really speak for because I only saw little bits and pieces of it. But 
my one thought on on uh, like the Lesnar Orton thing is just I don't know. It seems from everything that I read and heard about, it sounds like it was a, almost a one spot match, and that one spot was Orton leading. I'm like, I I kind of agree. I'm not sure from that standpoint if that should have been the main event, but I can see what you're saying as to why they would do something like that. It's, it just seems weird to me. Unless, like, I, I agree with you, Un, unless they were trying for more of a, hey, UFC, what, like, try to do a UFC feel where it can be stopped at any point. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the one thing I, I can see too, but it's like. Yeah, but, but you, don't need the, you don't need the blood to do that. No, you don't. You don't. No, look at, look at Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens from NXT. Like, that, that, that was Kevin Owens just powerbombing Randy or uh, Sami Zayn to death, and they just cut the match off. Yeah, yeah. but th- that's um, another – but Brock Lesnar is that type of guy that's a ground and pound that would beat the shit out of you. Like, he's not, he's not going to yeah. do multiple power bombs in a row. He's just going to go on top of you. He maybe do like five, ten suplexes, get on top of you, and beat you to death. Um, so that's probably why they were trying to go with saying, hey, you're in UFC, do some of your UFC stuff, but with, you know, Randy Orton. It's kind of yeah. weird that it took place at the main event, which kind of made it soured a little bit for a lot of people. Yeah. Actually, I was thinking about something, and I, I just remember what this reminded me of. And I don't remember if he was in the main event. I don't – actually, he wasn't. Uh, it reminded me of the first time that UFC was on Fox, the uh, special that they did for the first UFC on Fox, where they hyped basically one match for the entire like hour time slot or however long it was supposed to be. And then that one match ended like maybe a minute tops. And so the whole hour, like the whole hour up to that point was like all this other stuff. They had all these fights on the undercard that you had to go to like their Facebook page or whatever to watch. And then they got to the main event uh, on the special itself about halfway, maybe two thirds of the way through the special because they were doing all this, you know, inside look at the, the fighters. And then the match itself was like maybe a minute. And then they had to kind of almost go for time after. And it was just like, I don't know, like that that kind of stuff just makes me realize that you know, UFC, MMA and wrestling are are way different animals in, in that regard. And you have a preference. Like, and you have a preference. Like I don't like I I don't like that whole build to to X thing, right? Versus you get a whole different kind of build to something with I uh, guess you can say something with more substance, right? Yeah. So um, yeah, I can I can certainly certainly see that. Um, I, one, th- one one observation I have, you know, obviously we're looking at the post, we're looking at the lineup for SummerSlam, and we realize how many people on there were on say Takeover the year before, right? Um, in the same weekend, and, and even even to the point where I was enjoying the pre-show matches, like guys like like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens on the pre-show matches were killing it. I thought. Um, it, even though, in my opinion, uh, Takeover definitely wins on moments, on feeling, on entrances, on things that just kind of blew you away, that give me the the uh, the wrestling chills, the Hulkamania wrestling chills I get when I watch wrestling and really love what's going on. Um, you know, same with Bailey, Bailey on Raw. You know, those, those kinds of things. Um, SummerSlam doesn't deliver that, and didn't deliver that. There was there was nothing that really felt that special. There's a lot of great stuff. It was very entertaining. It was a good SummerSlam, and I dare say the best SummerSlam that we've had in a while. But yeah, okay. it's not a, it's not TakeOver, but man, it's a lot closer than it was last year. I, th- I think... Yeah, if I, I think uh, go ahead with, no, go ahead with Eamon. Eamon's on, Eamon's on a little bit of delay, I think, yeah, because of his sorry. internet. Let's get let him go. Sorry, uh, can I also say that uh, I agree with you guys that SummerSlam had the best match of the weekend. However, I don't agree on the match. Uh, I, I do think AJ Cena was good. I think the best match was the women's title match. Yeah. Now, now some people will disagree, okay. Eamon, because um, one, it felt like it kind of went weird because of a botch. 
first of all. Um, so, I, what, see, see, I, what, 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 what worked for you? I, Explain to us why, why, why you think that. Because I, I had watched it, I had watched it afterwards, mm-hmm. uh, and I heard about that, and I heard about the box, and that it looked weird based on the box to me. When I watched the mask back, I didn't notice that. Really? I thought they picked it. I did. I thought it looked seam. I thought it looked seamless. Really? Like I knew. I knew the box happened, obviously, but like the, as far as like their transition into what they were doing, I thought it looked great. Like I thought it looked seamless, and I thought it made it make sense. Mm-hmm. I, I was really happy with that match. Yeah, I mean, no, no one remembers that Bailey and Sasha had a botch last year at Takeover. It, it's going to be one of those things yeah. that it's, that's just going to be forgotten about. And 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 Oscar and Bailey this year had a botch. So yeah. it's like, it's it's you know, it's just something that happens. I think, I I I, I some people were theorizing that they it, there was an audible to put the belt on Charlotte because of what happened. I do not think that. I don't think that's the case at all. No, um, I think it makes the most sense to put it on Charlotte, specifically based off of what happened on Raw. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think yeah, I, I really enjoyed that match. I think that to me that was the best match of the whole weekend. It feels like injuries uh, the Sasha seems to be accruing seem to help people want her more because she keeps having to disappear for periods. <laughs> oh, it's so, gonna do wonders for Finn. Yeah, it's going to be great for Finn too, right? We just had a little taste of him there at yeah, I mean, uh, SummerSlam. I mean, we we've we said we wanted less of the demon. This will make sure we get less of the demon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> but anyways, um, but no, I think it was a, a I think it was a, a good weekend. Either way, I think if you're a WWE fan, um, you you had a lot to like about this weekend. So, mm-hmm. Sorg, Sorg, would you dare say this weekend was glorious? <laughs> Oh jeez, we I need to talk play about play that. Play guess what's on my? Play. Guess what I'm playing when I'm driving around town? Guess what I'm playing? If I could set it, set my alarm as that song, it would be. It's just <laughs> I I can't get enough of this anymore. It, 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 and that 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 entrance just sold me. Gargano Wait, and Tomasa. Play this or no? I don't Cause, care. Uh, yeah, because uh, honestly, we'll get, I, no. I will defend. I will defend. Oh yeah. Wait, we're, now we're gonna now we're gonna get blocked. Thank you. Yeah, now, now, good job. Monetize this shit, WWE. I don't care. I don't no, care because get, it's glorious. Get get I will blocked. defend. I will I'm defend. Gonna we're gonna be out of a job. It's gonna uh. glorious. We're gonna shut down our Twitter accounts. Yep. There's yep. Oh, that. we'll touch on that in a moment. Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode. I heart you so hard right now. I I honestly cannot believe how over he was. It's amazing. It's amazing. Like, like the entrance I knew was going to be over because the song was amazing. Yeah. But during the match, I cannot believe how over he was. Yeah. And I'm like, this is the, this is the guy who was in TNA. Like, I mean, all the TNA guys were super over, super duper over, and I cannot believe that. Like, just wait until James Storm comes back again. Oh, oh sorry yeah. about your <laughs> damn choices. I've been trying. Time. I've been trying to decipher if he comes back, does beer money happen? And I'm like, it can't happen with this glorious. No, character. it can't. Now it cannot My, happen. Yeah, it's exactly. too that's what, hot. That's what I, that's what I was saying. Yeah, it's, but James Storm can come back and want it to happen. Uh huh. And Bobby Roode can be like, oh. Yeah, sure, sure, buddy. Yeah, and it doesn't no. help. <laughs> oh, you mean what they should have done when he came back to TNA? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's just that other side of Florida tends to do things correctly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know, guys. I I really liked NXT and a uh, uh, takedown, uh, takeover, Impact takeover, Brooklyn. Um, on, on, on the, the other day. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to check out some pro wrestling that uh, maybe some people have popped up and maybe some people going to pop up, you never know. Indie Wrestling.us. A uh, really great show this past weekend. It'll be up on digital download very soon, as well as I actually sign up for the newsletter over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com because that does double as the Indie Wrestling.us newsletter. And you will actually get a show from 2009 that includes uh, greats like AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, mm-hmm. Delirious, uh, for free if you sign up for that newsletter. And and you'll get uh, notifications on uh, the release of Cage Fury. 
Cage Fury 2016, which included a, a brutal cage match uh, that did the blood that did did the bleeding uh, did the uh, uncomfortable bleeding first this weekend uh, between mm-hmm. Dylan Bostic, yeah, that guy that dropped the right back all those years ago, and uh, and uh, DJ Zima Ion DJ Z, <laughs> yes, he did that. Um, also, friends of the show, Andrew Palace and Chris LaRusso, who's popped up on Ring of Honor here and there, um, in a, another brutal cage match that that, that, that got weapons involved. Uh, you can go to IndieWrestling.us's Facebook page, and we actually have a 360 video of Andrew Palace and Chris LaRusso entering the cage. If you want to go check that out, IndieWrestling.us on Facebook and IndieWrestling.us. Uh, check out Around the Indies that The Riz is actually in the process of taking over. Yes. He is now your man. So if you yes. want us to talk about your indies, you talk to The Riz. Uh, tweet me at The Riz there on, you go. on Twitter or Riz Plays Games on Twitters. Or just find me on Facebook. Say, hey, you're that guy that's doing things. Here's the thing I want you to look at. Now look at it. And it there is. is the master of the self plug, Riz. Hey, Check out IndieWrestling.us. No. Check out um, all the names of the past, present, and future. And some great stuff over there. Like I said, Cage Fury 2016. Also releasing this week is Very European, The Travels of Claudio Castagnoli in the IWC. Ricola. Oh, yeah. It's that area, baby. That's er- that era, baby. Back when he had hair and... Different Sometimes suits. when he didn't have hair. Sometimes and he, back when he also had a first name and a last name. Yes, when he had two names. There's actually even a match on there. Uh, him teaming up with Chris Hero as the Kings of Wrestling when they returned briefly in 2009, I think it was. Uh, Against the uh, Founding, Founding Fathers. Fathers. Founding Fathers, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's matches on there with Sterling, Sterling James Keenan, uh, also known as Corey Graves today. Um, and also, uh, the, the first match uh, on there is actually with Nigel McGuinness, of all people. So, did you know he was an Can IWC? Name again, Nigel McGuinness. There we go. McGuinness. IndieWrestling.us. Go check it out. All right, guys. Sword. Let's talk about the internet. <laughs> the internet sucks sometimes, Sword. Can we talk about the internet? Can we talk about this? Uh, another thing that's been on fire um, on the. Uh, on, oh, geez. Jeez, where did I rant about this? I think I ran on this on my personal Twitter account yesterday, right? And your personal Facebook account. Oh, I did on and Facebook everything. as well. Well, it, well yeah, we cross posts and it went from there. And your clerk. And your live journal. So, here's the story, as far as I understand it. Apparently, um, we know there's parody accounts and we know gifts, wrestling gifts are hilarious. WWE themselves post gifts during the broadcast of their shows. Um, to the point, I pointed this out. I think I uh, last uh, probably on Twitter last night. Um, I typically watch the USA feed on their app on my phone to my Apple TV, and uh, and we, we we it's a bit of of a delay, right? And by the time I get to a point in a match, I I had a GIF pop up in my Twitter feed from uh, WWE Universe that synced up once it loaded with the move that was happening on my feed <laughs> in the match. So they, I mean, the feed's a little delayed, but it's actually not that bad. These guys are really turning these out. So really, you could just watch their feed and kind of get a good idea of what's happening on on Raw, SmackDown, SummerSlam, etc. So um, I won't get deep into, but there's a thing called the DMCA. I've talked about this on many of shows. Um, there's takedown notices. We talked about this with YouTube before, uh, but Twitter has it too. And apparently, WWE has um, filed copyright claims. On people, I, I guess they were the bigger giffers, which mm-hmm. is a weird phrase to yes. say. Um, it wasn't just like I shared a gif and they're going to sh- shut me down for copyright. Um, but they, but they, they hit some of the bigger ones, some of the more popular ones, and uh, and they also shut down some parody accounts. Not all parody accounts. Not all parody accounts, because Vince Vince McMahon Senior is apparently <laughs> still good. Uh, or Vince McMahon Senior, Vince Senior's ghost, is it? Yes, Vince Senior's ghost. Uh, technically, uh, well, he hasn't he hasn't tweeted since anything. But I think. Yeah. Well, if that is, what are you going to take down? It's not like we're well. like well, Hold on, hold on. We got yeah, a little bit of crosstalk there. Uh, Alex, what did you say? Sorry, I said I think Shoulder Zane is also safe. 
Okay. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Lana's booty was uh was was liking my tweets last night, so that's still around. <laughs> Amen, what... I don't think I don't think Sammy's shoulders are ever safe. Really. Oh, uh, or his a- ankles. Amen. What oh. were you saying? No, I was just saying the uh, you know it's his ghost. I mean, we're not parroting him. I mean, <laughs> if we ever take that to court. If we ever take that to court, that's our argument. So here's where I stand on it, and we'll go around and get your guys' opinions too, but I have been very vocal on this. I find this very disappointing. WWE has been awarded and is the go-to that I recommend to people when they say, how should I use social media? And I say, well, look at what WWE does. WWE has, you know, touts how big on social media they are every week, but not on tout. Um... It, they they they've been doing this for years. They've been doing it the right way for for years, and we can sit there and say d- booking things the right way, and it's a very objective opinion for us. But there is a right way to social media that is effective and helps your fan base and makes us bigger fans and involved fans, right? Like things like we we we're talking during shows, and we have the, every you know just about everybody we're watching on TV has a Twitter account and may like or retweet or respond to us individually, right? Um, to how they handle Facebook pages, how they handle you know all kinds of different vines. I think they still do Instagrams. There's the, the, there's a lot of accessibility to that. Snapchat stories. A lot of the, yes, actually yes. Um, a lot for you guys to dig into as a fan, right? One of those is gifts, and again, WWE themselves are doing gifts. Uh, a lot of fans would do gifts. Gifts, I think, are a social media. Uh, it it, it it's a language, or. It's it's it is a language. It's, it's a commercial. It's, it's moving emojis. It's it is it is it, it it it's part of the social culture of social media around your brand. These are fans doing it, not people trying to steal it. Mm-hmm. So apparently, I think very specifically, they um, went after people posting gifts of SummerSlam while SummerSlam was happening. It's a pay per view that's a little more of a protected thing. I wouldn't think so since it's not $60 a pop anymore, but apparently somebody there thinks so. In my mind, the legal team at WWE is very disjointed from the social media team at at, uh, at, at WWE. I feel like if Joey Styles was still around, there would be some hell raising going on. I hope whoever is in charge of their social media is 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 laying into somebody right now. Because... Is you, it, is- Hold on, hold on. I want to clarify a few things before we move on. Uh, Lex LeBrand, who we've had on the show, uh, uh, I know, Eamon, you've worked with him a bit there. Uh, he's, he's a filmmaker. And he says, well, actually, they are legally within their right. Um, under the DMCA, yes-ish. Um, it, I would contend, I don't know entirely, but I do believe the use of the gifts in the fashion they have been on Twitter um, do fall under fair use and parody accounts. I think fall under parody. Parody is protected by copyright law. Uh, unfortunately, that's deep- why the BWO is successful. Like uh, I remember, I was just watching the first ECW One Night Stand, and when Stevie Richards came out with the BWO, Joey Styles basically explained. If there was ever a gimmick that made so much money and never should have, it was the BWO and WCW. Their lawyers, Time Warner lawyers, could not touch us because it was a parody. Right, like that. that that's that's the whole gimmick of it. Like it's freedom of speech, essentially. Mm-hmm. And yes, and and to clarify, we're doing this conversation under GIF, not GIF, because that's how we roll. Okay. <laughs> We're that's about how the say it. the Mayhemers are about the hard G on here, and we're taking a stand on it we're as well. We're about the hard G's, we, the hard D's, all of them. Listen, Whoa. listen. Whoa! I am Sorotron. I am a Mayher Mayhemer, and I am a certified hard G. It's GIF. Let's move on. You, you uh, are not Sorgatron. You are not Sorgatron. There you go. It's Sorgatron. I'm a certified hard G. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Uh, but oh, that, anyways, that's, that's, the show title. Show title. that's the show title. Certified Hard G. Certified Hard G. Somebody put that in the <laughs> chat for me, please, um, or or Slack or something. But um, but anyways, so so I think that there's a misstep there, and again, nobody's going to come after them because nobody on Twitter is going to spend money against their lawyers to fight it. But 
it's one of those unfortunate things like we talked about with YouTube where uh, they can do takedown notices whether you're in the right or not for fair use, right? And monetization and yeah. everything. I, we might get a monetization uh, thing. I won't take the show down, but now the money on this show will go to WWE. How many school is that is on YouTube? Because we, cause we don't all. do, because we don't, for these videos, we don't do well on YouTube. Um, so, jokes on you, WWE. Um, but anyways, yeah. but we do great other places. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, so that's my general thing. I think it's unfortunate. I think it's it's hostile to your fan base. I I just I think it was just a poor, poor move. And and it, it's so unfortunate because now it's a chilling effect. Like, should I share this gift that you tweeted out, guys? You know, or am I going to get a Mayhem Show takedown notice? You know, so and do, on you know do you know what the biggest thing that bothers me about this whole thing is? What's that? There's two. There's two. One. We have Michael Cole, Mauro Ranallo, all the announcers telling us every 20 seconds, it seems like, to get on Twitter, to interact socially with the WWE, with the superstars. Like, they tell us to do this. And when the people who find really creative ways to do it, like, even the superstars themselves send out gifts. Is that not allowed anymore? Like they share. Biggie does, Biggie does it all the time. There are examples of superstars that shared gifts that have been taken down. Yeah, I like, think that's a statement right there. And um, let, let's let's go to the other aspect of Twitter. Just just for a quick second, um, if if someone complains to Twitter, let let's say she's a female about some asshole harassing them, like, with really, really coarse language. Twitter looks into it. But when someone says, when a company, let's say WWE, says, oh, they're using gifts of our free stuff that we give out on the network, Twitter shuts that shit down immediately. Double standard much? That's, it's horrible. It is, but it, it's, it's also, also because they have the they have money, right? They're they're they a big lots of yeah, money. but they're not investing in Twitter. No, 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 no. But the, but but well, they are they they are in they are in that they're using it and that they are driving people to it. So mm. WWE is just important to Twitter as Twitter is well. WWE is more important to Twitter because especially with how Twitter is today, um, like WWE is a giant hey look what we're doing over here this is what you can do with twitter and also it drives people to the platform because you have a little twitter bird and ad signs on the show that millions are watching on cable every single week right uh so they will move for wwe because wwe can say you know what maybe we'll use this thing over here maybe we'll we'll, we'll spin up tout again mm -hmm. you know because we can probably do that um or we will try to do that and leave you and leave you in the dust and we'll make another WWE Network social network. And it's probably going to fail. But in the meantime, so does Twitter. Because WWE isn't around to prop it up. No, and, and, and that's a broad... And that's Twitter, a broad Twitter doesn't need WWE. No, 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 that, no, no, no. No, they do. They very much do. They need every WWE. They need every Beyonce. They need every every uh, you know other stars I can't think of Justin right Bieber. now. They do. They need every Justin Bieber because mm -hmm. they need to be seen as important. And if the news story yeah. comes out that WWE walked away from Twitter because uh, because of something like this and they didn't respond, then no, the stock of Twitter goes down. That's already in trouble. And we're turning into the other podcast, by the way, awesomecast.net. Um, but uh, but yeah. but no, no, it's very it is very important. I think more than you think. Um, but but going back to uh, the WWE on on Twitter, doing this the gifts and all that. It's not like they're bashing it. it it's not like uh, before when you had. And, and this is going to sound weird saying it, and I know it's not true and all this stuff, but the reason why uh, Matthew from Botchamania has 15, 20 different usernames over the past few years is because he gets taken down every time because he shows the bad of professional wrestling. And, and he shows clips from WWE he shows clips from TNA. He shows clips from every single aspect of it. And he gets shut down either by TNA, by WWE, by everything for copyright laws. 
but and and with you know something like uh somebody like senior senior larry larry austin larry that one um it's it's not i don't see anything wrong with what he, he or she is trying to do um i want to clarify were, what matthew yeah. is doing is very explicitly um um defendable not defendable mm-hmm. but but is everybody's in their right to I get guess, them down yeah. Everybody, everybody who has footage in that has a right for them to to do a takedown. Mm. Um, now, but, I don't know. Now, here's here's my contention. I don't know under what rules something like Talk Soup or Web Soup or whatever the show is these days, the Soup does their it, it, thing. It, it, there is no Soup anymore. Well, so, Tosh Point no, does the same thing. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. They, 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 but they, 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 you know, the Soup. Let's say. Um, I, I don't care if it's around or not. That type of show. Uh, I I I, bl- I don't know if they pay a license for that footage or if they just use it. Um, so they would kind of have to fall under whatever that kind of show does for right. what they do. Um, it's one thing if you're news, you can do stuff and just say courtesy of blah 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 um, without paying them. I believe, from what I understand from our friends in the mainstream media, please correct me on on Facebook or or whatever. Um, but but no, it, what he does. Under the rules of YouTube, under the rules of DMCA, are completely um, acceptable for takedowns. Um, it right. sucks. It's but, awesome. I love what he does. I love what he does. But yeah. but it's it um, is it is playing with copyright material in a way that you know there's enough of he's it. He's trying to he's trying to profit from it probably. Uh because you can now profit. Well, from now you could. Can, you well, could. I, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know if he does that with mechanicians to make but, money off of it other than I, I want to do this thing. And I think I think it's more of a, a form of expression in fandom of wrestling. But so. the, 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 the point I'm trying to make is uh, Larry Otto is doing the same thing or did the same thing with his gifts. He he, he or he or she, I, I don't know if it's a guy or a girl. I'm sorry. Uh, but the, the, Larry Otto always had just a gif. It was just one gif, over like, just one gif of showing you how awesome wrestling really is, and it kept on sh- like it, it's a and he kept on adding more to it and another one and another one and it's nothing bad and it makes people want to go out and see what the hell is going on over there right and it makes you want to actually watch your product it makes you actually want to do things. But having them just go, no, you're, it's copyright. I, I, is kind of just a kick in the balls. Hmm. Uh, I think Alex, you were trying to say something there uh, on, yeah. under the cross talk. I want to give um, you a moment. That's okay. Uh, I just want, <clears throat> sorry, I just wanted to say from like purely from like a content kind of perspective, uh, what Matthew does with Botchermania, mm-hmm. I feel kind of walks a thin line, but. I tend to believe that it sides on, like it tends to lean towards the side of fair use, because there's commentary, and you know there's commentary on it. It's not just showing the clips, and right. I think that's maybe a defense of sorts for yeah. WWE shutting down gifts because gifts don't have that commentary or anything like that to do to really show under to really have it. All under fair use. I I will contend that because what what <laughs> okay, there's a couple of things. Um, wrestling without context, while does not have text on it, I think speaks loudly in in conversation and context and 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 adds that. Um, yeah, there's no voice over what the gift does, but how yeah. many how many times are we saying, you know, this is how I feel on Mondays and there's a gif of like, you know, somebody in the move, you know, or something, right? No right. I mean there yeah. there's com w- there is is WWE Subway still up? Jeez, <laughs> oh, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> but um and 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 and, and again, uh, it, it seems they very very specifically targeted people gifting SummerSlam during SummerSlam. Right. Yeah. So I don't think we're in as big of a, a worry now. I will now. Now, granted, I, I, I guess WWE is kind of doing you a favor where they are making gifts of the show for you to use of anything that's mostly worthwhile. 
So I use those. I just retweet those and add my own commentary whenever I'm doing the Mayhem Show account, especially on Mondays. Um, and I mean, that's my safety net, and that's how I feel like using it. And it's a quicker way, an easier way, depending on what device I'm on to use something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And again, you're adding commentary. You're doing that. I, I, Twitter is the commentary when you're using GIFs in that fashion. Yeah, I think. And, and, yeah. It's, and again, it, it's, it, it's a commercial. Yeah, it's free advertising it's free. for them. If, if something crazy – if I wasn't watching SummerSlam and I saw a tweet of something crazy happening on SummerSlam, I would turn it on. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of like what happened during the Monday Night Wars. Like if one of your friends was watching Raw, one of your friends was watching SmackDown, uh, Nitro, like, oh my god, Lex Luger just showed up on Nitro. What? Really? I'm flipping to that channel right now. Exactly. It's, that's what it is. Right. Right, That's I think what it's what it uh, is. It's people talking to friends all over the world saying, "This is what you're missing by not watching this right now." Like right. Kalisto just did a, a Selena Del Sol off the top of the ladder. That's a gift that makes me want to turn into yeah. what the, what the or, hell just happened. Or was or was it that cool guys? Profit off of it. Yeah, they're not doing it maliciously. They're doing it for the fun of actually watching wrestling, which is why we want to watch wrestling. Because we want to see those top spots. We want to see everything happen like that. So just shutting these things down, I mean, and, and it's not just WWE gifts. It's it's wrestling gifts. Like the, I, I remember Saturday I was watching gifts from uh, the Evolve show or uh, – yeah, the Evolve show that was, that, that was, that was happening. And I was like, I really want to buy the, the, the WWN. The, the the what wrestling network thing that they have just yeah. so I can see evolve yeah. and I'm just sitting there going I want to buy this now because I'm watching this yeah. but it sucks so um and also I, I I think it's also um any good social media person should be charged with making something that's infinitely shareable that's how yeah. you yeah. use social mm-hmm. media right gifts are a way to do that um. And I think, again, I think there's a disconnect between the two departments, law and, and the other. The, the, the lawyer law is that's our content and you shouldn't be using it. And, and thus the very nature of, you know, again, I think it's just, just tone deaf to what, what the platform does. It's, pl- it's tone deaf to what WWE's other department in social media is doing. And mm-hmm. I think it's unfortunate um, there. So let's wrap that up there. I, I think. Uh, you know who I miss? You know, you know who you miss from Twitter? Huh? Speaking of parody accounts, Angry Vince. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Every, 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 every week we kept on quoting – we keep on quoting Angry Vince. And he was one of the first ones to get, like, shunned. And I think he worked for WWE. Wow. Yeah, they got, they're, the, guy. the prevailing rumor was that it was JBL. Yeah. <laughs> that was the prevailing rumor, which made a lot of sense. Because didn't he like tweet something out from JBL's account? Uh huh. Yeah. So either English. either either it was JBL or it was whoever micro, was micromanaging JBL's account. Yes. Uh, Eamon, do you have anything on the broad conversation? I think we're going to bring up a slight angle on this uh, on Indie Mayhem show perhaps this week. But do you have anything on the broad conversation you want to add here before we head out? Uh, I kind of missed out on some of it, but uh, <laughs> uh, so so no. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I understand you fell asleep because we were talking about social media. That's fine. My okay. internet went wrong. My internet, my internet cursed us. We heard us talking about gifts and takedowns, and they were like, "Nope, shut it down." <laughs> shut it down, indeed. Well, uh, you know what? You can gift to uh, your heart's content are are images and you eating slice on Broadway. Your friends at sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, so many of you have participated in it. I just oh, met with I, our... I thought you were setting it up for us to do a gifable image so someone could drag this from the YouTube feed and make a gif of us. Yeah. Yeah, hey. Oh, that's the other thing. Please <laughs> gif us. Please gif us. Please ma- please meme yeah. us. I almost said please meme us. Please meme anything that happens on the please show if it's them. worthwhile, if you like meme a comment us. or something. Um, I've been doing that a little bit with uh, Riz's face from the Christmas party uh, uh, lately, uh, and actually used it on my column at Sorgatron.com this week. If you want to know my thoughts on Google Hangouts shutting down, that was from two years ago. Uh, was it? It was. Yeah. It was, and it's still amazing. Um, but anyways, 
Um, but no, please. Oh, and I want to give a shout out before I get in too far into the ad. I'm sorry. Uh, I want to give a... So one thing I said in response to this was, hey, please give any projects that I work on. And I had actually just completed a project a few weeks ago. Some of you guys may have seen it. My friend Nick Iben uh, did a wonderful music video. And he went and I can't find it. He gift uh, part of the part of the video, so you can share that. Uh, so it is somewhere around here. I tweet entirely too much to my Facebook, apparently. Uh, yeah, there it is, right here. Uh, so thank you, Nick, Nick Iben, uh, for doing that. That was a lot of fun. I was really uh, that was really heartwarming to see in my feed and response, and I really I really appreciate that. Uh, so go check out that video, Nick Iben, and you make me smile is the video that you can check out on his YouTube page. Uh, so hey, back to uh, our good friends. Give a shout out, Slice on Broadway, Slice on Broadway dot com. Just had just had lunch with my good buddy Fuzzy. I'm um, not a wrestling fan, so he's not going to catch Fuzzy. this. Hi, Fuzzy. We love you, even though you don't like wrestling. Uh, just had a wonderful catch-up time with him uh, shooting the shit over a buffalo chicken pizza. Uh, it's great stuff here in Beachview, PA, along the tracks. If you're visiting Pittsburgh, stop by. Or if you're visiting Mayhem Studios, stop by. Good friends, you jag off swings by whenever he's in the neighborhood. You jag off.com. And also down on Main Street in Carnegie, PA. And if you're on your way out to the airport, it's a little easier to get to. Or if you're happening to catch a Pittsburgh Pirates game, like so many have been tweeting me uh, lately, uh, they've been stopping by our friends at Slice on Broadway at PNC Park. Uh, so uh, three locations. Check them out if you swing in. Sorry, guys, out of town, but you're just going to have to visit Pittsburgh and check them out. Oh, Alex hey, is not hey, happy. Sorg. Alex Sorg. is not happy. Sorg. Yes. Sorg. Alex? We're, we're, we're- we're going to have a slice when I'm there next week. Yes, right? we are. Oh, man, Mike's here next week. Man, Mike, man, Mike gets to drop into the studio right before I go on vacation. That's great. That's great. Right. Alex? So my question is, is it safe to say that Slice on Broadway is glorious? Glorious! Yes. Oh, we have a theme song for our pizza now. Thank you so much. Slice on Broadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter. They're also on the Facebook. They're on the Instagram. Let them know. The Mayhem Show sent you. We'll be back after this with the big question. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net. It's the story of a show named Mayhem at Sorgatron here with the crew at Mad Mike 4883 at the E-Riz and at Amen 2, please. And thanks to our friend Alex Cars, Chikara in 15, where apparently I said some secrets about pro wrestling uh, some months ago when I was in California. And I can't entirely tell you what I was talking about then. So... It will be a surprise for all of us. chakarin 15com Stay tuned for that. Amen. You have a big question. I have a big question. Sorry. Uh, we talked uh, uh, previously about Finn Balor and his recent injury. Uh, it seemed like this weekend has, has – stop it. Um, it seemed like this weekend has been the weekend of injuries. Uh, Finn Balor injured uh, uh, with his shoulder injury. Uh, Samoa Joe dislocating his jaw. Um, but I also want to talk about one that really sparked a conversation for me personally. And I want to get your guys' thoughts on Sasha Banks. Now, I believe that Sasha Banks uh, is is very much beloved by a, a great majority of the wrestling community. Um, uh, for those that don't know, she is taking about a month off. Uh, she's been pulled from upcoming live events uh, to recoup from some back injuries uh, that have been nagging, apparently. Um, and it does seem, as much as we love Sasha, there has been a history of her being a bit injury prone, it seems. Um, uh, in some recent stuff. And, I, and there's, as I was saying, as, as much as, as there's a group of people that really love Sasha Banks, there's also kind of a mixing contingent of people that I've seen online uh, who also are in the belief that um, Sasha Banks takes way too many big bumps. Uh, I mean, we saw we saw the bump she put in SummerSlam. She did that bump when she did the dive outside at Raw, uh, where she almost leadered herself, basically. Um, the uh, I, I think the, the whole conversation almost started last year at TakeOver Brooklyn when she got hit with that reverse uh, Hurricane Rana and the slow-mo video of it came out and she basically lands on her neck 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, and it led to a discussion that I wanted to have of big bumps in wrestling. Is there a place for them? Yeah, where is the place for them? Because uh, I think I, I think a lot back to someone like Mick Foley, who uh, from all you know from all he said about the stuff he did uh, in you know ninety eight ninety nine. Uh, in his career, that the stuff that truly shortened his career, um, he felt that for the most part he needed to do that stuff because it would ensure his longevity uh, in the sense that he would be remembered. Um, obviously not longevity in the sense of, of being able to compete because he slowly started to deteriorate in that sense and not be able to wrestle. Uh, we see that even with Daniel Bryan, you know. Uh, you know, the way he did a lot of things, I like he wrestled the way that he bumped, the way that he wrestled, kind of you know, t- you know, shortened his career. So I, I want to have that conversation. Do you think the bumps have a place in wrestling? Where is that place? Uh, what are your thoughts on? Well, when we talk pro wrestling, um, there's the conversations that a lot of them talk about, where you know you have a you have your bump card, right? And um, and 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 certainly, I mean that that's you can only take so many of them, right? And maybe I think there's a place for them. I think sometimes they're overused. I don't think Sasha is one that overuses them, right? Um, mm. It feels like part of it. And and I feel like this is kind of the next thing. This is the softening maybe of pro wrestling because we, yeah, well, let's not hit each other in the head anymore. Let's not bleed all over the place so much anymore, right? Because we, we realize, hey, that's maybe not a good thing for us and our longevity and everything. But meanwhile, we're still, as CM Punk puts it, throw ourselves at the mat every night. Um, you know, I, I think you take a risk. It's part of what you do. Trapeze artists don't Think about, well, is this risky to do this kind of thing? No, that's what you do. You're a trapeze artist. You take the big, you know, chances. You know, it's not a chance because you're training, you know what you're doing, but something could always go wrong. Um, Nine out of ten times, sorry to interrupt you, sorry. Nine out of ten times when, if if Seth Rollins does that powerbomb into the, the barricade powerbomb to, with two, uh, to Finn Balor, nine out of ten times, he performs that perfectly. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's going f- bad for him. Right. He hits the he hits the wall correctly. He does something like he, he does everything co- right. It just so happens that somehow, like somehow, one arm hit first, and then that's what how that's how it popped out, and it or or same thing with Sasha, and same thing with even even the big not even the big bumps the uh, uh, the Samoa Joe, he he pretty much ended Tyson Kidd with a yeah. muscle buster, and 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 not, again nine out of ten times he hits that muscle buster to Tyson Kidd. Tyson Kidd takes it like a champ, and he, he he's fine. It's just. Awkward yeah. that he that one small move to the right to the left to the, doesn't tuck your head in doesn't do this correctly falls cor- incorrectly uh, goes too fast does something weird it, it just seems like it's happening it, 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 you just want to get that spot correctly and more times than not for some reason these wrestlers are getting injured by these big spots. And, and, and also and, injured by the small spots. Sting on the Legends with JBL was talking about the, the turnbuckle bomb, right? That a lot of people mm-hmm. are saying maybe yeah. that should be banned. Uh, and he's, he admitted himself, he's like, he's like, I just didn't chuck my chin. I know how to take it. And I just mm-hmm. didn't for some reason. Right. And it led to what it led to. Um, it's, I mean, I mean, taking a, every day bump you could not do the right thing and snap your head back you take yeah. a million of them in training so you learn not to do that as a wrestler um it it's all about everything you do and there is a risk i mean geez neville broke his leg by like running across the ring wrong 
You know? Yeah, I mean, Triple Triple H busted his quad by running to break up a pin. Right. Sami Zayn tore off his shoulder by just slamming the steps because he was excited during his entrance. Randy Orton threw out his back, taking out the trash. I mean, yeah. you know, it's does that just, mean the trash needs to pile what, up? I don't know. But I, I will say that if there was better storytelling outside of the matches they wouldn't need to try as hard within the match to get big pops. I would contend that some of these guys, like a Kevin Owens, like a Seth Rollins, etc., um, will do that other way. They're like, well, I'm going I'm, I'm to kick ass. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. Right. But I, I was just listening to the podcast that uh, Jericho did with Nakamura. And... If you watch a lot of Nakam, like they they were talking about this, they're like, it's not about the moves, it's about the time between the moves. Ooh, like uh, not wow, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. It's not about the moves; it's about the time between the moves. If you can make something simple like one, like one spinebuster, and then you react and you sell and you. Make it look like it hurt, even if it doesn't hurt. Yeah. Like, even if it doesn't hurt more than a normal bump, like, you don't need to ascend to, like, doing the, the turnbuckle power bomb all the time. Because, like, I, I hate to get Jim Rossi on everyone. Those moves should not be everyday moves. Like, no. those moves, those moves should be for bigger matches. Because if you do them in every match, it becomes less and less impactful. Yeah, I agree. And also, I mean, look at someone. I I think a great example of that that comes to my mind. Look at someone like Bailey. Her finisher is a belly to belly suplex, a yep. normal belly to belly suplex. But when she does it, it gets a pop. Mm-hmm. I think that goes a long way. I think, you know, it's it's. I I. I but I'm also like, I saw a lot of people talk about how you know, oh, you need to ban the triple power bomb now. Real, it's a turnbuckle power bomb. Yeah, don't. It, yeah, it, that's stupid. It's you know if you really think that doing that specific move has more danger than any other move, ridiculous. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's frustrating. I mean, and and another another good example for this is uh, actually there's two examples. One is actually on Saturday, last Saturday, Hideo Tommy came out mm-hmm. and did something that. Sh- that everybody wanted him to, wanted him to do, and that was hit the GTS. And that spot right there was amazing, but it might have hurt Austin Aries. It might have hurt Austin Aries, but uh, but and then another one that I was going to go with uh, is the same thing, but with the Brain Busta by Sami Zayn. Mm-hmm. You know how. They were they were focused on like everybody wanted him to do that spot in NXT. They were saying he's going like, every time he goes up to the top rope, it's like and somebody's up there with him. He's like he's going to do the he's going to do the brain buster. He's going to do it. He's going to do it, and he never does it. But he showed that you you don't always have to use that move to gain something. And at uh, where was it? Battleground, the, the, the yeah, 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 yeah. At Battleground, he used it, and the place exploded. Well, he did a different version of it. He did it on the main. Yeah, place. but still, it was still the brain buster. But I, I want to, I, and this may be insider. I, this may be based off of inside information, I got, but I for because I think based off of what Bruce just said, because I've heard from people, uh, saying he's still on Janeiro, uh a uh, guy was wrestling him and, and wanted to do the brain buster spot. He, uh, generic apparently told him that he wasn't doing that spot anymore uh, oh. because he's, he's hurt with it and he wasn't willing to do it again. So I, I don't think we're ever going to see that spot in WWE again. No, um, no I do think, not. I think that spot has a, has a certain level of danger to it. Yeah. Um, uh, I, again, not to name names, uh, I there's a couple months ago in Texas at a really really small independent promotion, uh, an independent wrestler used the exact same move on somebody, and that wrestler almost got paralyzed. 
Wow. Um, I mean, we've seen we've seen video we've seen the video of someone taking the six one nine incorrectly and yeah. dying. Well, like, uh, that that wasn't from taking the six one nine. That was from taking the. Oh, that was, for, yeah, that was from taking the drop kick into the, the drop um, kick into the six one nine. Something simple as that. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's it, it, it. Big spots in in the wrestling matches are cool when they happen, when they happen, period. But to say those big spots are causing all of the injuries is bullshit. Because right. you can get injured doing the simplest shit. And, and going back to the, the origin, I agree with Sora completely. I think as much as Sasha Banks is known for the big bumps, she does them when they need to be done. She does them at SummerSlam in a big match. She does, does them at WrestleMania when she wins the title for the first time. Uh, take over Brooklyn. Those are big moments. Those are big matches. And those matches are memorable because of those thoughts. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, let us know your thoughts, guys. The big question: Are the uh, how are we boiling this down? The big are the big bumps bumps worthwhile in wrestling? Yeah. Uh, let us know. Hashtag big question at Mayhem Show on Twitter, or if you find this uh, just in the comments section on a YouTube or Facebook post, wherever you may be listening to us. If that is uh, there, please let us know. All right, I uh, I wanted to talk about. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to include this part here. So I, I asked a question on Twitter today. Uh, the, 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 that was a lot of fun. Uh, mm-hmm. So we've all enjoyed the glorious. Glorious! Thank you. Thank you. They're already, we're already tagged on YouTube, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. uh, sorry, I just noticed something on the Facebook. The Facebook group is getting very interesting these days. Uh, but anyways, um, I want to know... And I wanted to know from you guys, um, what are places that you are now playing the Bobby Roode, places and reasons to play Bobby Roode's theme music in everyday situations? Hashtag glorious. Um, we had some comments. We did have some comments. Uh, our, our friend Rob, that was on the show a few weeks ago, says uh, on his way to work always, or on his way out of work always. Uh, Riz, you said at the gym. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yes, I did. I did. Uh, Kyle. Kyle says on the toilet. By the way, when I post this, I said somebody will say on the toilet. It is inevitable for somebody to say on the toilet. That because that's well, the first I mean, thing I thought of sword, when I came I mean, up this question. Because come on, you just leave the bathroom. The fan is running. The toilet is flushing, and you go. Glorious. Yes, it's the number one and number two answer. Oh, and also uh, Bobby F J Town says catching a rare Pokemon. Uh, so, so for you guys that didn't answer already, uh, where would you play the glorious song? Mike, I know you got to have something. Um, every time I leave work, that's, that's every mm-hmm. time I leave work. So right, as, right. as soon as, as soon as, as soon as those, uh, sliding doors close behind me, I just raise up my arms and I say, glorious. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Every time I leave work. Amen. How about you? I'm thinking the best would probably be in like really awkward situations. Like, <laughs> like, 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 like when oh, the internet I'm works. Talking about the camera and just interrupt. Like when your internet does not work at all. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, the perfect yeah. time to do it. When your <laughs> internet works, that's a glorious moment. Um, uh, I was saying like say like say you're in a crowded subway. Not uh, a subway train, not a okay. Sub- Amen. Not, not a Amen. subway restaurant. Amen. I will do this in a subway restaurant and a subway train. I will see which is more awkward. Okay, but like you know what I mean, where like no one's paying attention, and then you just crank your phone to the highest possible level and mm-hmm. you play it. Um, I will say in New York City, that probably wouldn't raise any eyebrows. Not the weirdest thing. Definitely not the weirdest thing going on. Definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. People might even throw you money. Maybe. (laughs) Yes. Um, But, uh, but no, no, that's interesting. After sex would be interesting. Also, Um, also a good way to break up. Depends on the sex. Yeah, yeah. Depends on the sex. I mean, you know, different people have different perspectives about that sort. I like to think, I like to think if you play it, it's kind of uh, self-referential. 
Okay. Right? Yeah. It's a, I feel like I feel like anytime you play it, it's a celebration of you and whatever you just did. Um, from from my buddy Chris in the chat, he said glorious when his kids were born, which you know that that's that's very sweet. Okay. Oh, and, and he also says, "Who came from my balls?" Yes, yes. I, I figure I'd throw that in after I'd say it was very sweet. <laughs> I feel the love in that post. I'm I'm now scared. <laughs> no, 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 no. Chris, Chris is a good guy. He actually, uh, he wanted to know our thoughts on the new belt design, Sorg. Uh, I didn't get Both a good look. the universal look. one and the ones on SmackDown that they did. I didn't get a terribly good look at the ones tonight when they presented them, but they look like they're basically the women's and, and, and tag belts, but with blue blue backgrounds, right? And and, mm-hmm. the, and the tag belts are nickels. Ooh. They're not pennies anymore. Ooh. They're big, shiny nickels. I also want to point out there's a lot of gifts on WWE.com's front page right now. Tear it down, Sword. Shut it. Tear it down. Shut it down. Tear it down. Shut down the internet. Yep. Yep. Uh, I like there's a lot, just just a lot of movement happening right here. Yeah, because Sorg, we we actually Chris and I watched SummerSlam together at his place. And there were a lot of people who didn't like the belt where I was watching it. Okay, I didn't think it was the most horrible thing. I didn't think it was worth the the chance that it got. Um, or yeah, anything like I, that. I think it. I think the belt looks fine. It's just the leather they use on the strap always looks weird. It's the same kind they use for Kane's mask that looked like a fruit roll up. I guess it is a little bit, you know. But I yeah, mean, like I mean, there's a way to do like a red leather belt that just looks like a belt. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can you can go to stores and buy red leather belts. I'm not gonna say what store is that. That's that. That's up to y'all. But um, you can do that, and it doesn't look weird. But uh, the SmackDown titles look awesome. Yeah, they do. They do actually. Um, I, the, the blue accents look great. And, and and I don't like. Some people are saying like this is lazy for them. I think it's better branding. It's a, it's it's a, a title belt. Yeah. <laughs> Let it go. I would have liked if they did something that wasn't a belt. A trophy? Like I think that would have been cool. Like a ring, like a championship ring. This goes to this goes to our con- guy. I don't even know why I should bring this up, but this goes to our conversation we had during the Smack watching SmackDown. I know uh, because well, well, no, because we brought up the idea of, uh, of what we saw on Raw, which was their first attempt of LGBT characters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Hot sweaty theory. men, y'all! Hot sweaty men. Well, here's the- well, here's the thing. If you're going to have, like, say, two gay wrestlers, like, you know, being in a gay relationship, you're essentially going to make them a tag team. Or, I mean, like am I right? Man, or, like, or like a manager valet situation. Well, I'm saying in a case where they're both wrestlers. In a case okay, where they're so both wrestlers. In case you, you, you didn't say that before. That's why I brought up the Darren Young and boyfriend scenario. Right. Where it was just like a, a, love, a, a love thing where Darren Young wins – and hugs and kisses his boyfriend. But I mean, that, but it was, was, it's when I came up with the idea of what about doing a tag team division where it's all people in relationships? What? But it's what? You, you, yeah, that that's that's okay. where you got me. Okay. And like, then, it, was, you know? it was the weird, it, it was the weird, like, so you're going to have, let's say the Usos and, Breezango do something like that. You know, you know, if, if, well, if no. wait, 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 I want to, I want to point out, so I, I got this still up. Make, make, no, make people, make new people that are actually, you know, gay, you know, or it doesn't even have to be gay. And maybe goes into in gender or whatever, but that would lead to Mike's idea of, of having actual rings instead of championships. I think it'd be awesome. That's- I think it'd be really cool. I think that, I think it would separate the brands, but it would still remain on brand. Like you could have a big ring that looks like the WWE Championship, but it's a fucking ring, and and you just wear it, and you can zoom in. Like imagine Seth Rollins holding up his fist and saying, "I'm the Universal Champion," and all you see is a glittering WWE logo. That'd be amazing. That would be I absolutely know. amazing. And then you have to get it like resized for every different person that wins. I mean, it it, it would. Ah. Be- it would be different. Uh, but... Resizing? No, no, I no because <laughs> I I think it would just look really really cool. Like no, instead no, of having then, like and then you, you'd have like Randy Orton like like or or Bray Wyatt just like 
like hunched over, just going, my precious, over no, and gonna, over again. No, gonna, no, exactly. You, know? you can no. do something like that. That'd be awesome. No, no I, I was going to say, it's just going to end where it's like, they're washing their hands or something and it accidentally falls on the sink and they realize they're fucked. <laughs> like, <laughs> truth when, that is when not funny. That plus, is not funny. That happened one time. It'd be a easier to bring through the airport. Yeah. Mm. It'd be from, a lot easier. From, I'm not saying that one. From the chat room, uh, WWE, WWE, no. WWE no. Championship pants, WWE Championship shoes. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, you know. It's got to be the shoes. It's got to be the gorgeous. shoes. Something about those shoes, right? Um, Shano Met Shano 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 WWE Championship shoes. Wow. Bailey could do a WWE Championship headband. <laughs> WWE Women's be. Championship headband. Studded headband. <laughs> sure, why not? And, that, and oh, oh, and that'd be no, that would be perfect if it's like studded, because like instead of doing like the whole like oh I'm gonna bring the belts in the ring and hit you with it, you just headbutt someone. <laughs> so uh, we talked about. We talked about the one new um, character last night that was presented, and, and Johnny Knockout. Yeah, Johnny Knockout. Johnny Knockout. Johnny I mean, Eamon, a- how do you feel about that first? <laughs> I, love, I love you, Eamon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eamon. Hey, we can all have an. Opinion, I mean, sir. I mean, I mean, uh, we we were kind of like, well, what could they do? What's the right way to do this? You know, we we, we kind of had that internal debate. I think we talked about it online or, or or somewhere else and stuff. Like, is that a I mean, I think it's kind of goofy, but is it like kind of an acceptable representation or or, or not? I'm I'm on the fence. Okay. Oh. I think I told I think I told Riz when like LGBT like the story came out of Stephanie McMahon saying they wanted to use more LGBT characters was uh, someone I saw someone comment on it being like, well, what about Adrian Adonis? And I really wanted to be like. You have to understand, like, the characteristic of being gay is that you feel romantic things about men. It's not the way you dress. It's not the way you act. It's not any of that. Right. Like, there's a difference. Like, so like, to, like Darren Young is, but doesn't, like, doesn't outwardly... Not, he have to fly, right, he like, doesn't outwardly like, present himself as, look how gay I am, you know what I mean? I mean, it, 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 he's just, it, it's more a fact than... Than a presentation. Yeah, it's like saying Finn Balor is Irish. Yeah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> also, also, you got to say this is the first time we had a potentially LBGT uh, uh, character that didn't prey on uh, homophobia because we all kind of thought it was pretty awesome. <laughs> in the well, and, and the crowd cheered for him, so cool for that. <laughs> yeah, you um, know, hey, New York City, if anywhere, right? Yeah, no, no, good. no. Hold on here. The Billy and Chuck wedding. I, I, I have to give it credit. It did turn them face. After it was uh, found out that, you know... Well, they did get attacked by two very large Samoans. They did. Exactly. They did. I, and I don't know what that kind of statement and, is. And Eric Bischoff. And Eric Bischoff. Well, even... I, I like the I like the Billy and Chuck storyline. I like the Billy and Chuck storyline up until the end. Right. When they when they pulled the swerve and being like, we just did this for a publicity yeah. stuff. Like, that's the part I didn't like about it. But other than that, like, I, I think... To a degree, yeah, I guess what they did is better because you're actually identifying gay individuals as what actually makes them gay. But at the same time, you also don't have to – they don't have to want to wrestle because they want to be in the ring with big sweaty men. I but <laughs> here, here's – I honestly think – and I, this could be just me. But I honestly think they just tell those guys to go out there and make themselves famous. I literally With feel that one liner. I literally feel that that was off the cuff. I literally yeah. feel like he did it just to do it. That, yeah. that is kind of a thing. That's like, like you thing. are given uh, Jesse these... or Jeremy, whatever his name is, Els, uh, Jake, El... is it Jacob Ellsworth or Ellsbury or whatever the whole name is. It's not Ellsbury. I know it's not <laughs> Ellsbury. <laughs> but like the, the guy with like the chin, uh, but he. He was the first one who went up and went, I'm doing this to make a name for myself. I'm doing this so I can have – like, I'm going to try my best. And now we have hot, sweaty men. Right. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it was scripted. Uh, I, I don't know. I like to I believe that – friend- I like to believe that friend of the show, Delilah Dunes promo, where she said she, she thought Simone Biles taught her she can do anything. I like to think that's off the cuff, but 
it probably isn't. <laughs> it, probably, it might have been. It might have been. absolutely <laughs> might have been. But but to me, I don't know. Something about it made it seem like he just did it because just the way Byron reacts and the just I don't know. It just felt like they didn't expect him to say that. I would have loved to see Braun's reaction if he was in the ring. Yeah, yeah, you go. <laughs> Braun, Braun probably because Braun's not a seasoned vet like like a Jericho or an Owens. He would have lost it. He would have yeah. lost it. I think. There's um um I think you guys kind of half alluded to it, but it's like these guys are on live TV, and they're not terribly unpleased or anything like that. And 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 whether they're told to say something or like ah go 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 do whatever, like may I don't know if WWE is giving them an opportunity to be the next Colin Delaney or 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 what, but. Uh, I mean, it's definitely if you're given that, and even if you're told to do X and you do Y and it goes over, like that's the kind of grab the gra- brass ring, um, go into business for yourself. Let's make sure people know. I mean, think about think about when Dylan I mean, Bostic and the still- other guy were 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 rhyming. Um, two is better than one or whatever against Ryback, and now there's still a meme we look back to, right? <laughs> so I, you know, that that kind of idea. I think. If anything, it might get them more bookings. Yeah, yeah. As long as, as, long as you go up, as long as you don't get it. Come see, <laughs> sweaty guy lover, uh, uh, Johnny <laughs> Knockout uh, on uh, this weekend in Brooklyn. Hey, Sorg, at, Sorg. I you w- know where you know where he should be booked right now and made the champion. Lucha Vavum. <laughs> yes, yes. Lucha Vavum. Hey, good for that guy. That guy probably made his damn career with that. That's so great. Um, but no, I, it was great. It, I love it. I love it. I hope they keep going with this kind of stuff. So, um, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Sorg. I, I think Hi. we really kind of got into some of the stuff we learned from wrestling this week. Uh, but, uh, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Um, I'll, I'll go first. I, I learned that Sasha Banks starting a clapping chant for Bailey is probably the cutest thing I've ever seen in professional wrestling. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah, it was great. Riz, I actually this is the weird part about this. I relearned something that I learned. I think I I said this before on the show. Uh, I learned that my opinion on something can be swayed by a crowd that thinks differently. The, okay. the, the, the WWE, no, the universal championship, uh, the universal, universal champion, the, the, the title. I was looking at it. I'm like, this thing sucks, but I didn't say it out loud. I didn't do anything like that. But as the, as the match went on and as every time they showed it and everybody booed it, I'm thinking to myself, this title actually looks pretty damn good. And I'm I'm fine with everything going on, and I'm doing I'm I'm watching the match, and I'm looking on Twitter, and I'm like I'm seeing everybody hating on the title. And I'm going, this is one of the better things that WWE has done with this title. It looks different than anything else they've done, even though it looks very similar. <laughs> but in my head, I'm like I'm going to be different, and I don't give a shit. And that that's. And it makes me feel so much better knowing that now I like a thing because other people don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, what about you, Eamon? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that sometimes even people with the best intentions can't deliver uh, to uh, what needs to be delivered. Sorry, John Stewart. <laughs> Aww. I love John Stewart, and John Stewart legitimately is one of the few celebrities that WWE brings in who legitimately loves wrestling, mm-hmm. and. That bombed if they, so bad. If they just had him say "Aw, Brooklyn," and then have him come out with the new day, it would have been gangbusters. Yeah, it would have been fine. He didn't. He didn't need to do a whole speech before him. All right. Uh, sure. Yes. Sure. What did I learn? I learned oh, the absolute. Wait, what did the chat room? Wait, wait. First? We'll get to that. The but I, I Facebook. learned the absolute joy and sicking Jimmy Vegas on Tragar. Yeah, that was so much fun. That was so great. Uh, we're, we're I mean, having... no, that was after uh, I made Tragar hand over a Sorgatron Media business card to Lufisto. Yeah, yeah. I really hope she 
contacts me because I don't know how to contact her. So, <laughs> and, and, and I felt weird that he did that. It was like, well, I could have done that. So, but anyways, uh, we were having a great conversation. Uh, Riz was there, Bobby FJ down. Maybe we'll talk about this a little more on the, uh, Indie Mayhem show. But, um, um, at, at one point, Trey Gar was like, you know, who scares me is that, uh, Jimmy Vegas guy. Like, like absolutely scared of that guy. I'm like, oh, oh, really? He's, he's such a nice guy. What are you talking about? You know, he's cool, you know, and whatever. And and just so happened that Vegas was kind of like went by us like shortly after that. And I was like, so I'm like, Jimmy, I want you to meet somebody. And he goes like, you know, hey, this is Traegar, you know, and, and he says, oh, hey, how you doing? And I whisper in the air. I whispered in his ear real quick when he was kind of leaning over to uh, to shake his hand. By the way, he's scared shitless of you. And he just like, he just like, like comes at Traegar and scares the out. shit out of him. <laughs> 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 so, first of all, thank you, Jimmy Vegas, for playing along. And thank you, Traegar, for being such a good sport. I hope uh, I hope you got a, a pretty good memory out of that uh, that show uh, uh, this weekend with IWC um, Cage Fury. So, uh, a lot of fun with that. And I couldn't stop thinking about that moment as I was editing the Jimmy Vegas match this morning. <laughs> <laughs> either so uh that's good that's good um from the chat room um fiona glow oh uh, okay thank you for correcting me on my attempt to correct you uh she says finn is a badass because he dislocated his shoulder reduced it and then finished the match bam mm-hmm. human badass um and, and reduced is the way to do it. That, that's okay. Yeah, cool. they even they even kind of showed it. Like, Did they? In the, in the slow, video they showed recap. it in slow motion. Yeah, like uh, that's just that's yeah. nuts. that's nuts. Wow. Like the only time I've ever seen something weird like that is when Sabu used to tape himself up when he would get cut off barbed wire. Wow. <laughs> like he would just actually grab tape and just wrap it around <laughs> his arm. Uh, Van in the chat room says, "Book Natalia as the first transitioning champ since we're just handing out belts." <laughs> There you go. Wow. There you go. Wait, what? Poor Natty. Uh, He's probably right. <laughs> um, I feel you know, I, I feel like that's something they would do to her too. Yep. Yeah, considering it absolutely considering is. what they've done to her in the past. Like and, um, and she loses it via farting. Oh, oh this is, don't bring, give them ideas, give man. Don't give them ideas. Yeah, I um I am not reading that one. And we're gonna go to Facebook. Uh, so Drew on Facebook says that SmackDown is being raw with storyline development, and Johnny Knockout needs a tag with James Ellsworth to to form the sweet, James Ellsworth James That's Ellsworth it. to form Sweet Chin Music. Oh no, oh no 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 no! That's horrible. That is horrible. No. Oh, there you go. There you go. All right. Bobby F. J. Town learned that Talking Smack is the best WWE show right now, and The Miz and Daniel Bryan should win an award. Um, and Alex Cars, after leaving the show, learned that uh, Chikara is ready to compete with the likes of WWE Network, WWE I mean Live, after this weekend's first live Chikara Topia special. So that's what he was referring to uh, earlier when he was talking about uh, the wrestling they watched this weekend. From Twitter, uh, our friend at Bro Douche learned that blue oh. always looks be- blue. Blue looks way better as a belt than red. Um, and then our, uh, uh, Brandon uh, Cassioli on Twitter says that's why Nightwing looks cooler than Robin. Just kidding, but blue always has been my favorite color. Uh, he also says he learned that uh, fruit roll-ups don't look good as belts, as we discussed. This is true. So. By the way, neither do fruit by the foots. I learned that when I was twelve. And not fun story. <laughs> fun yeah, story. No, theory wasn't that bad. No, no. That's okay. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't fruit punch, but it was. It wasn't that bad. Guys, I'm going to wrap the show here <laughs> so I can go have another ecto cooler to man, uh, celebratory no one, no one ecto fruit cooler. By the foot. Thanks, and man. Uh, dream of food by the foot all night, man. My grocery store down the road is open 24 hours, and I bet they got all the food by the foots you want. Anyways. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Thank you so much. Subscribe to the show. Share the show. If you made it this far, you are a fan of the show, I would hope. And uh, please, please let us know what you thought of the show. And and and, and just just, just get in with us. Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. A lot of great conversation on there. A lot of new faces. And it's been a lot of fun lately. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline or the email address. Good times. Good times at Wrestling Mayhem Show dot com live dot wrestling mayhem show dot com on Tuesdays ten PM Eastern 
We go live shortly after SmackDown goes off the air live. So we go live. Mayhem live. Thank you so much, everybody. And like I said, Chikara15.com. Check out. Apparently, I will be on it very, very soon. Um, at Amen 2 please on the Twitters. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling uh, out of Austin, Texas. Check out Inspire Pro on SmartMarkVideo.com. Also, check out the free match with Angelus Lane. Angelus? Angelus Lane? Yeah. Yes. And uh, Delilah Doom, who you saw on Raw a couple weeks ago. Free match on their YouTube, Inspire Pro. Check it out. Also, yes, indeed. Mad Mike at Mad Mike four eight eight three on the Twitters. Um, behind one of the guys behind the Midweek War, you can check yes. that out in the Wrestling Mayhem Show feeds um, wherever you find us on Friday live on Google Hangout for the time being on Thursday evenings at some point. <laughs> Keep an eye out for that. And, and also, also uh, Amen and I did a recap of Lucha Underground season two last week, so uh, definitely check that out. We talked about Lucha for a solid hour, and we also did a mini watch party at the end of the episode for the trailer for Lucha Underground season three. Nice. Oh, I watched that. It's oh, jeez, oh, jeez. Sorg, Sorg, you got to watch Amen and I reacting to it because we literally just Amen. We had to take what twenty minutes on that. Basically, yeah. Like it's a two minute trailer. We talked about it for twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> seems right that's what it does and also through riz at the e riz riz plays games boss mm-hmm. battle podcast dot mm-hmm. com yes and sword aren't you forgetting the new writer for thing? around the indies at indie wrestling dot us yes. and also i might be doing some uh, streaming later on this week join me on the twitch at uh, riz plays games Fantastic. I'm at Sorgatron, SorgatronMedia.com, Sorgatron.com, and WrestlingMayhemShow.com, AwesomeCast.net, all kinds of places. Um, we're having fun all over the internet. Please join us in our party, our Mayhem party. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.